Welcome, welcome, welcome to the God is All Around worship experience. I'm Apostle Dr. Gloria W. Wright, and you have tuned in to the right place. We are here in the WAIN TV studio at 3105 Washington Road. You still have time to get here and to join us here in the studio. This is Resurrection Day, and we are excited about the fact that it's Resurrection Day. You should be excited that it's Re Resurrection Day because there is hope through resurrection. There is hope through resurrection. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for those who have tuned in today. We give you praise right now for what you're going to do and how you've already worked things out in many people's lives and they don't even know it. Bless us, O oh God, from the youngest to the oldest. Bless every family out there. Bless this nation and the whole world. Bless us all, Father, for we truly are in need of blessing. Oh, God, we are in truly in need of your favor. We are in need of your grace and your mercy. So we thank you for extending grace and mercy to us. Bless us, oh, God, in a special way. As we celebrate this Resurrection Day, some call it Easter, we call it Resurrection Day because this is the day that Jesus got up out of the grave as he promised in three days. And we thank you, God, for Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> we thank you for, again, joining in with us today. And <clears throat> we ask that you pray for me. Uh, there is a need to pray for me because my voice seems to want to do something other than what I'm telling it to. So we're going to let the Holy Spirit speak through me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want you, if you have your Bibles, <clears throat> to turn with us to Luke 24, verse 8. Luke 24, verse 8. But I'm going to read verses 1 through 8. Amen. And it states in verse 1, very, very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb carrying the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb. So they went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They stood there puzzled about this. When suddenly two men in bright, shining clothes stood by them. Full of fear, the women bowed down to the ground as the men said to them, Why are you looking among the dead for one who is alive? He is not here. He has been raised. Remember what he said to you. While he was in Galilee, the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and three days later, rise to life. Then the women remembered his words. That's 8a. Then the women remembered his words. Amen. I want to speak just for a few moments on the subject. The stone was rolled away. The stone was rolled away. Now, you might ask, if you're a non-believer, what does that have to do with anything? The stone was rolled away. But if you go back and you study history and you study your Bible and you follow Holy Week that Jesus was crucified and that he was buried in a borrowed tomb, and that he had said to his disciples that in three days he would rise. And so we want you to know that the word resurrection means to restore the dead, to restore a dead person to life. It means to invigorate. It means to revive and to restore, to regenerate and to revitalize, to stimulate. So I'm here to tell you today that this resurrection of Jesus Christ, over 2,000 years, we've been talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Why do we do this? 
we as Christians must tell a dying world that we all will die. We all must die. But the question becomes, will you be resurrected and will you have eternal life? Jesus was crucified, dead. Not like some believe that he was in a coma. Not like some believe that he was unconscious. Jesus was crucified, dead, and was buried in a borrowed tomb. And it was so much so that, that the people feared him and what his power was like. So much that when they put him in this borrowed tomb, they put a stone at the entrance of the tomb. Now you might ask, why would they put a stone to the entrance of the tomb? Some may say so that he couldn't get out if you're a believer. But then the Romans and those who crucified him would say so that no one would come in and steal the body. And so it was in their consciousness, the enemies, they thought that someone would come and steal his body. So they put this big stone there to make it impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And so God rolled the stone away. That was God's doing. It was already prophesied that Jesus would be risen in three days. And so it is. The stone was rolled away. And we hear about the women who went to the tomb. And they found that the tomb was empty. They found that the stone had been rolled away and that Jesus was nowhere to be found. The question becomes, where did he go? Uh, they wanted to say that someone stole the body. But we know, as believers, what the word of God says. It was prophesied. It, it was that Jesus was to set an example for those of us who live today. Generation after generation during these 2,000 years, people die and people have died. The question becomes, what happens when you die? Some people say, well, if you're born again, you go to heaven. Others say, if you are not born again, you go to hell. But we want you to understand that we who are of Christ Jesus, we who follow Christ Jesus, we who pray in Jesus' name, and we follow God's commandments, we can be resurrected when we die. We know that the scripture says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. That should be a consolation for those of you who are afraid of dying. You don't have to be afraid of dying. Because God has promised us certain things. So let us look at the subject. The stone was rolled away. Let's look at this stone that was rolled away. I thought about this and I came to the conclusion that in our lives today, many of us have stones that need to be rolled away. They are too heavy for us to move so that the Holy Spirit if we've got the Holy Spirit, we'll move those stones out of our way. Let's look at some possible stones that may be in your life today. Uh, some of us may be with a stone of unemployment. You've been seeking a job and you can't find a job. And when you find a job, they tell you you are overly qualified. Then they tell you you're underqualified. Then they tell you they're not hiring right now. So that stone is still there blocking your progress, blocking your victory. So somehow that stone has to be removed so that you can blossom, so that you can grow, so that you can have victory. Some of us may have stones of depression. You have depression because of a divorce. You have depression because you just have, a, a, in your family, it runs in your family. And that depression causes you to roll up in a fetal position in bed and stay there all day and all night and all week because you don't want to be bothered with anybody because you have mood swings. 
that, that stone can only be moved by the Holy Spirit. Will you say, how do I get the Holy Spirit? You must be, simply must be born again. Let's look at other stones. Let's say that you have this stone in your way, and it's a stone of addiction. You know, people think that everyone who has an addiction is addicted to drugs, such as heroin and cocaine. But there are people who are addicted to food. There are people who are addicted to pornography. So they need to have that stone rolled away so that they can be free of the sins that they live in. Are, are you getting the point? What is your stone today? What is your stone today that needs to be moved so that you can become free? I, I wonder, there are some people who need to be healed. And so they have a sickness stone. A stone where they're not getting any better. They've tried every doctor. The doctors have tried every kind of medication. And that stone will not move away. So I say to you today, if you are a born-again Christian, Christians have benefits. You pray and ask that that stone of sickness be moved from you so that you can come out of your tomb and be free and have victory. Somebody may have that stone whereby you have a stone of, of obsession. You are obsessed with your wife. You, you are obsessed with your car. You are obsessed with your clothing. Everything about you says that it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. So you have this obsession. It's truly an idol that your car becomes an idol. Can you imagine someone having a car that's an idol or having their clothing as an idol? They worship their cars. They worship whatever they worship. It's a sin. There should be no other God before God. Amen? And so there are all kinds of stones that can be in your way. There are some students right now. They have the stone of debt of college debt, loans they have made when they were in college. They can't seem to pay those loans off. And they wonder, will I ever see a paycheck? Because I have seventy-five dollars to $100,000 in debt. And along with the debt, you have interest attached to it. And that stone is very difficult to move. Even if you get a job, you're still hiding behind that stone, wanting, wanting God to move that stone of, of debt away from you. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. So I don't know what your stone is that needs to be removed today. Maybe you have a stone of loneliness, and you're home alone a lot, and you want to have a companion. You have to ask God to send you that companion. You have to ask God and believe that God can do that. Amen. So I'm here to tell you today, I don't know what your stone is today, but I do know that God can roll that stone away and resurrect your life. Now let's look at resurrection again. When I say resurrect your life, that means that you can be restored from death to life. You see, if you are depressed, you are spiritually dead. You know, if you are having all these problems in your life, there is very little life in you. People don't want to be around you because you have that stone of complaining. You ever seen people complain all of the time? Yeah, 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 yada, yada, yada. What's wrong today? Well, you remember when I told you? No, I don't remember that. Well, you know, what happened is this. We don't necessarily have to hear your complaints, but we can pray for you that your stones that cause you to complain will be rolled away. Amen. Come on, somebody. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So you need to be invigorated. You need to be revitalized because you're like a damp mop. You know, you need to have regeneration in you. 
You need to be revitalized, rejuvenated, stimulated, so that when people see you, they'll be happy to see you because you will be wearing that face that says that my stones have been rolled away. Amen. Some people have kidney stones. They want these kidney stones gone because from what I hear, that's the worst kind of pain. As a matter of fact, I was told that that pain is worse than childbirth. Mm. Mm. Ongoing. Amen. Can you imagine ongoing childbirth? Mm. And until the stones have passed, you are in complete agony. Mm. You are in a terrible, terrible, excruciating pain. So what is your stone today? What is your stone today? Maybe you're living in poverty. Maybe you are homeless today. You have no home. You have no place to go. You're asking that God would move that stone out of the way. Let's say you want transportation. You ask that God would move that stone away. But you see, when God restores you, revitalizes you, and, and, and re, revitalize and rejuvenate you, you have to believe that God can do that. He says that if you ask believing, you will receive. Right. But we, we need to get some things out of the way before we start asking. Because the Bible says, my sheep know my voice, nor the voice will they listen to. Well, I would imagine that God knows your voice. God knows your voice. So when you speak, God knows who's speaking and why you're speaking. The question becomes, do you know God? Do you know God? And then when you know God, do you know God as a prophet? As a biblical character? Do you know him as a rabbi? Or do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Do you know him as the Messiah that was to come, that came? Do you know him today? You've got all of these stones in your life. And nobody can help you. The banker can't help you. The psychiatrist can't help you. But when God is summoned to the case, the stones can be removed. So it was. Jesus was crucified. Crucified on Calvary's cross. Bled and died for your sins and for mine. And you, listen, with your arrogant self, won't accept the fact that he really died for you. I'm not here to make friends today. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you just like it is. You have some troubles in your life because you are not bowing down to the one who came to save you, Jesus the Christ. You see, when you humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've been out here in the darkness too long. I want you to put the light on me, shine the light on me, and bring me into that marvelous light with you. When you do that and you begin to go to a Bible-believing church, you begin to read this word, it may not make sense to you because everybody who picks up this Bible won't understand it. But I'll tell you this much. There's a way that you can understand this Bible and the way you can understand the Bible is not to read it in the physical. I want you to hear this. If nobody else tells you this, you tell them the apostle told you this. You cannot read this Bible in the natural or in the physical. You must be spiritually connected for this word to jump off the pages to you. I'm a living witness. You can read all day long, and it'll be word for word, verily, early one Sunday morning, and then you say the stone was rolled away. Has no meaning to you. You may be educated with a master's degree, a doctor's degree, and you say, I read it, but it doesn't connect. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make <coughs> sense because you're not spiritually connected to the one who can roll away stones. I'm here to tell you today that if you want the, stole, the stones rolled away in your life, you need to be connected to the stone roller. 
I said you need to be connected to the stone roller. That should have been the title of this message. Do you know the stone roller? I'm here to tell you. And then it talks about angels who were right there at the tomb. Do you know that in your lifetime you have sometimes been in danger and you didn't see the angel there protecting you? But even though you are not born again, God still has protected you from hurt, harm, and danger. Now, that ought to be a reason in itself to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Today is a good day. I say today is a good day to be resurrected out of your sins and say, I surrender my all to you. I heard about this Jesus who was crucified, dead, and buried. I heard about the third day he got up out of the grave with all power in his hands. And I heard that he even folded his grave clothes before he left. So that meant that whatever the people thought about him leaving, that he wasn't stolen. You see, he said one time, I'm not letting you take my life. I'm giving you my life. That's what he's done. God has given us Jesus the Christ so that we can have life and have life more abundantly. The question becomes, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus as a rabbi, a prophet, a teacher? Or do you know Jesus as our Lord and Savior who came to save the whole world, no matter your race, color, creed, or political affiliations. And, and, and if, uh, let me say this too because it's important. You don't have to start judging people because they are Baptists. They are Methodists. Episcopalian. You don't have to judge the Jews because they have not surrendered. You don't have to talk about Islamic people. All you need to do is look at the man in the mirror and say, who are you? And what do you believe? You see, when you point one finger at these people or those people, you've got three pointing back at you. I'm here today to tell you, as a mother, as a teacher, as a pastor, as an apostle, it's urgent. Look at me. It's urgent that you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Man woman, boy, girl, or other. It's important. So you're gay. Doesn't matter. Gay people need the Lord Jesus in their lives. You see, I'm not going to judge, but I'll say this. God doesn't, cha- God doesn't allow us to change people. You know, there are parents who have gotten on their kids and say, You're gay, and I want you straight, and I want you, and I want children. It's not about you. It's about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you teach your children to pray, if you guide them in the right direction, if you help them to look up to the hills from whence cometh their help, and know God who sent this Jesus that would die for our sins, then whatever the person that you have in your life or your child or your mother or your father or your sister or your brother, whatever is going on in their lives, lead them to Jesus. You see, you, you, can't, you can take the horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. So all I'm saying to you today is if you will just introduce a man, boy, or girl to Jesus, your significant other. You see, because you can't have a marriage even if both of you are not saved. And that's why some people can't understand divorce. Divorce is, I can't forgive you for what you've done. If you are hooked up, tied up and tangled up in Jesus, you might begin to see things a little bit differently. But when we've done that, and I've done that, you have to remember That I am committed to my marriage until death. Go where you want to go. Walk out. Walk around the corner. Go get a loaf of bread and milk. Whatever you want to do. I'm here for the long haul. 
The question becomes, why am I there? I'm there because I love the Lord more than I love my husband. You've got to love the Lord so much that it trickles down to everybody. You can't put your children on a pedestal or your husband or your wife on a pedestal. You have to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the one who would come and save the world. He is the one that promised he would come back to get you. He says, I'm going. When he got up out of that grave, he told the disciples once he met with them, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Where are you going, Jesus? Well, you don't have to worry about where I'm going. You know how children say, Mama, where are you going? Daddy, where are you going? You don't have to worry where you're going. You just come on go with me when it's time. Amen. You don't have to even know all of that. Just trust me. Everybody say, trust me. Trust, trust me. And know that whatever you stand in need of, I'm a God who can provide for your every need. Yes, I'm the God that says, if all things are possible with me. Amen. If you don't believe it, I say, try him. Just try Jesus. Because that's what happens when you try Jesus and you surrender your life to Jesus. He comes and he lives on the inside of you. And he comes to abide in you and you in him. And when you begin to make decisions and when you begin to speak, the fruit of the Spirit comes out. Love and gentleness and kindness. You say, this person is evil. That person is evil. Check him out. See if he's born again. See if he's saved. Because if you're born again and if you're saved, you're in the habit of apologizing when you're wrong. You begin to say, I'm sorry if I hurt you. It's just, it's just a, what do they call it? It's just a part of being saved. It's just like a child who uh, was born between two parents. And they say, he looks just like you. Well, how is he supposed to look? That child looks just like you. Well, we want to say that we are children of God and we look just like Jesus. That when they see me and they see my smile and they see the glory on my face, it's not my glory, but it's the glory of God. So on this Resurrection Sunday, I say to you, when you get to your dinner table for your Easter dinner, and, and I know you don't want to call it resurrection dinner, but some, maybe some dinners today need to be resurrected. We don't know because everybody can't cook. Just thought I'd throw that in. But I'm saying to you, when you get to that table and you get ready to eat dinner, just realize what day it is. Amen. It is resurrection day. You know, people like to call it Easter because they don't want to deal with the truth. It's resurrection day. And you need to be resurrected. And the only way you can come out of that cave, that tomb, or whatever you're in, is that Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit today, will roll away the stone. I said will roll away the stone, just as the stone was rolled away over 2,000 years ago. God bless you richly. I pray God's blessings upon you and your family during this time, during this season. And may you always remember that you can't be good on your own, but you're good because God is in you. May God bless you and keep you. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Let us pray for our people and our...